welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to start to look into the new season and in particular the six Barcelona players who have to step up. We have lost Lionel Messi, we've lost our talisman, we have lost our star player and for that reason we need players to take on extra responsibility. These six in my opinion need to stand tall, they need to raise their game. So let's get to it. Because let me start first of all guys by saying that look, nobody can replace Leo Messi. It is as simple as that. It is an impossible task. Don't even try. Don't even think there that we can single out one player that's just going to step into the Messi role and take over the mantle and suddenly everything is going to be all right again. It will not be like that. We cannot replace the kind of influence Messi would have on the field. But Let's not forget here, and this is a very, very important point that we've got to make, football is a team game. It is not necessarily all about individuals. Just because you have the best individual player, just because you've got the best names on paper, it doesn't guarantee that you win anything. At the end of the day, you've got to have a team there that work hard, you've got to be in the right setup, you've got to have a good game plan, and ultimately, you've got to come together and work and function as a team. You can achieve big things doing that, teams have done it in the past, teams will do it again. And for me, it's the following players who have to step up now at Barca to make that possible. So, first up, it's Ansu Fati. Because when you think of a new era at Barca, that's what we're basically going into now as a team, as a club, a new era. What are the first names that come to your mind? It's Ansu Fati. He is comfortably not only one of the most talented players at this club, but in the entire world. He's still just 18 years old. We've all watched him explode onto the scene there at the Barca first team. He had an unbelievable breakthrough. He scored goals. He's played a leading role. He's got unbelievable composure for his age. He's taken at everything in his stride and he even took that influence onto the international stage when playing for Spain too until that injury. At the start of last season and Fati there being ruled out for what has now been nearly a year. He's missed nearly a year of football there. He's had to go through multiple surgeries. He's had so many different setbacks but finally come September it is fully believed that Ansu Fati will be back. And of course, guys, what you will have to say about Ansu is that he will need time. When you've been out for that long, when you've been on the sidelines for a period like that, you're not just going to come back like it's nothing. You are going to need their opportunities in the team to get back up to speed. You're going to need the fans to have some patience with you. But when he does return and providing he can get back to that level that he previously showed, there is every chance here that we're looking at a star at a time when we're desperately craving one Ansu is a huge hope for us. And up next, it is Memphis Depay. Because at Barca this summer, it has not been the easiest transfer window to add to our squad. We've had to be really, really astute with our signings. We've had very, very limited money to spend. And in Memphis Depay right here on a free transfer, it almost seems like we have hit the jackpot. Because I think we were all aware of what Memphis could do when he came in. We all saw what he did in France. He was very, very good. He was impressive as well with the Dutch national team. But I think throughout pre-season, he's actually taken that to another level. Level. He has really, really impressed us Barcelona fans with the quality that he's been able to provide almost immediately here after coming into this team. He's a confident guy. He's versatile in the way that he can play out on the left, down the middle. He scores goals. And those are all of the kind of characteristics now that we need in our forward line. And I actually think that when you look at somebody like Memphis, he seems like somebody to me who would enjoy the added pressure. Without Messi now, we need somebody to be a leader. We need somebody to really count on. And I think he would thrive on that. I think he would really enjoy being that man and I think actually all throughout preseason one of the most important aspects of his game and the one thing that's really really excited me it's not just about the fact that he scored you know he's got three goals in four games very very good record so far but it's the way he's taken those goals against Girona it was his very very first minutes in a Barca shirt he was in front there of a home crowd he had a penalty a few minutes before the end of the game chance to get his first goal and he just smashed it in like it was absolutely nothing you look at the goal against Stuttgart what a goal that was the first touch, the elegance, the poise, then the composure to just flick it over the defender's head and rifle the volley home. It was a wonderful goal. And then against Juventus, early in the game, an emotional crowd after Messi's exit, you know, an important game before the start of the season. He gets played in. He's got so much time to think about the finish, but he just dinks it. 
Matt Chesney to give us that all-important lead. And I just feel like when you think back to last season, the amount of chances that we squandered in front of goal, the amount of missed chances that we had last season, and also the fact that now, without Messi, maybe we'll create less, maybe we won't have as many of those chances, we need to be clinical. When we get them, they have to be put away. We need someone in front of goal who's not going to panic. And Memphis could well be that man. Then at number three, it's Antoine Griezmann, a player that we know we paid so much money for. He is a huge, huge signing for this club. And as of right now, we haven't seen his full potential. We haven't seen the Antoine Griezmann that we thought we were getting from Atletico Madrid. And I just feel like now with Messi gone, I feel like we all feel this way about Griezmann. Now, more than ever, there's no excuses. He is not only one of the most talented players in this team, and there's no question about that, but also now at 30 years old, he's also one of the senior. He has experience, he has know-how, and you feel like Griezmann will never ever get a bigger chance to lead this Barca team and rise under this kind of expectation. Because in the past, there's been doubts about his positioning. You know, is he working here? Is he working there? Can he play in the same team as Messi? There was doubts over whether he and Messi could combine and actually work together in the front line. And even doubts over whether Griezmann was going to remain at the club. But with Griezmann very much staying, with Memphis now having the ability to play ahead of him, to actually stretch the defence, and Griezmann having the freedom to drop in and get on the ball, that's what he wants to do. He likes he likes to enjoy himself, he likes to be creative, he likes to feel important and to actually feel like the centrepiece of a team. You saw him do that at Atletico Madrid, everything went through him. We've seen him do it time and time again with the French national team. We know how good that Antoine Griezmann can be, it's just about seeing it now. Transferred at last into a Barca shirt, this is his moment. Then at number four, we have a youngster. We have a really exciting and emerging young player in Yusef Demir. The 18-year-old Austrian who, of course, has been dubbed the Austrian Messi. And just as I said when he first signed, please, can we stay away from that? Because actually now, even more so, the fact that Messi is not here anymore, you don't want to do that to any player. That is the last kind of expectation that you want to strangle a young emerging player with. Yusuf Demir will develop at his own rate, at his own pace, but already you can see that yes, he does have talent, and yes, he has a lot of it. Because I think right throughout pre-season, and he has been a regular fixture in Ronald Koeman's first team, he's been showcasing all of the quality and all of the different assets of his game that he has in all kinds of different scenarios. Because on one hand, you look at Demir, he's a dangerous player, he's quick, he's agile, he can play one versus one, he can beat a man, he can cut in on that left foot, shoot at goal and make things happen. He can be a really dangerous player to have in your team. But there's more to his game as well. That is the important part here. For a young player, he has really, really good levels to his game. Against Stuttgart, for instance, you saw him play the perfect wide role. He was disciplined, he gave us width, he pressed from the front, he made intelligent runs, one of which, of course, led to his goal in that game. And then against Juventus, again, it's a different kind of display again from Yusuf Demir. This time he was in a more central role, he was in a deeper role, he was picking the ball up there between the lines in a midfield position, but he was brilliant, he was creative, he assisted Memphis Depay's goal in that game, and he also showed his brilliant work off the ball. He pressed well. He won the ball back. He was energetic. And this is why, already, Ronald Koeman, he loves him. He is a massive, massive fan in a very similar way to how he felt about Pedri during last preseason. And that is why Yusuf Demir, he's already establishing himself in the first team. And this is only the beginning. At number five, we have Frankie de Jong. And this is the important part here because I'm not talking only about players who are attack-minded, about players who can look to play in similar areas to what Messi did, because I think we need help all over the pitch. We need players in every single area to really raise their game. And de Jong is also one of those players. He's 24 years old now. He'll be entering his third season as a Barca player. And crucially, he's got the confidence now of coming off a really good season, his best season at the club in the last campaign. He was brilliant again for his country this time at Euro 2020 in the summer and you just feel like right now De Jong is in a really really good place mentally, physically and of course working with Ronald Koeman he feels very very comfortable under his coach right now and he's got the ability to play in whatever role he's been asked to do. Because let's not forget last season we saw him of course in a more natural deep lying midfield role either there as a direct replacement for Sergio Busquets or directly alongside him in that midfield position. We've also seen him play a much more advanced 
Grant's role in midfield. That's going to be interesting to see looking ahead to this season. He added a different dimension to his game, whereby he was getting on the end of things. He was making runs from deep and scoring very, very big goals indeed. That will need once again this season. And of course, even towards the end of the campaign, he was being used at centre-back there as the third man in defence. And there's no doubting De Jong's quality. His game is only developing. It's only improving. He's only becoming more and more complete. And I just think that De Jong now, in this Barcelona team, he's one of the two or three players that you'd look at our squad and you'd say, yeah, in their position, they're among the very, very best in the world. And I just think now, more than ever, we need De Jong to be that. We need him to be at his very, very best. Because without Messi, we need star quality. At number six, though, we have Mark andre Ter Stegen, who of course is not quite going to be available to kick off the brand new season. He's now entering the final stages of his recovery from the knee surgery that he underwent back in May. And I think already that's one thing that should really help Ter Stegen, give him good peace of mind. He did say that before that knee problem had been troubling him for quite some time. And that's why maybe he suffered a bit of a drop off in form last season. But I think whatever the reasoning, whether it was the knee, whether it was confidence, whether or not there were other things going on, we need to see the real Mark andre Ter Stegen back between our posts because yes for sure he's not being helped by our defence we all know about our defensive problems and obviously goalkeepers can only do so much in the end but even so Ter Stegen knows he can raise his level he's got another level probably two to actually go up to he needs to feel confident again I think he almost needs to get a bit of arrogance back about him again being braver at times coming off his line closing down forwards making those big saves when they really really can because let's not forget at the start of his career at Barca, he was actually saying to the club, look, I should be playing instead of Claudio Bravo. I'm ready to be in there. Where's that Ter Stegen gone? We want you again to have that belief that, yeah, you're the best. You are the best that we can possibly ask for. And you don't lose that ability. You don't lose that kind of presence. Because you think not so long ago, if you were a striker, one of the last goalkeepers that you'd want to come up against, it would be Ter Stegen. Along with Messi at times, he was saving us. He was keeping us in games in La Liga. And I think especially Especially now, in a team that maybe won't score as many goals this season, maybe Barca won't be as prolific in front of goal, we need to be even more careful at the back. We need a goalkeeper that we can 100% count on to save us when we need it. Ter Stegen must make sure he's at his best this coming season. And of course, guys, we have there gone through all six names who I really want to see stand up, stand tall, and be the best that they possibly can be in their roles this season. But of course, there's others too. There is players there that deserve honourable mentions, the likes of Felipe Coutinho, Barca's record signing, let's not forget. He's got the medical green light now. Will he come back into Ronald Koeman's plans? Can he, much in the same way as Griezmann, now unlock his true self at Barca and finally get his career here underway? Sergio Aguero, of of course, he would have loved to have been playing with Messi this season, but when he comes back from his injury, we're going to need his goals and his input there as an experienced leader in that number nine role. And of course, Pedri, much like Ansu Fati there, he has that star quality. He has the potential to lead us into that new era. We need him to continue what he started last season, to deal physically with the demands that are on him right now, and ultimately keep on growing. Because honestly, guys, when you look at the players that we have, when you look at the team that we have right now, we do have quality. We have lost Messi. Yes, it still hurts. Yes, it still will hurt. But we do have players in this team that if they reach their potential, if they show their true selves, they can be important in this team. And they can lead us again to good times at this club. So please, guys, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below based on everything we have discussed in today's video. What do you make there of my six selections in terms of players who really do need to step up and show us why they can be counted on there to fill the huge, huge void left behind by Messi? Is there anybody that you would add to that list? Is there anybody that you're looking at ahead of the season thinking, OK, this is your time? Let me know. All of that down below. A thank you indeed, guys, for getting involved and sticking with me here on the channel. I will see you soon, of course, with plenty more videos to come. But until next time, as always, Vishka El Barca.